John and Sal. OK. Carol, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. The legendary guitarist and singer Mark Knopfler has been making music for decades, selling hundreds of millions of records in the process. And now the former Dire Straits frontman is back with a new album packed with his signature sounds and toe-tapping rifts. We're going to have him here on the sofa in just a moment to chat. But first, let's just remind ourselves of some of the classics and hear his latest offering. With the Sultans With the Sultans Mark joins us now. Just away. Yeah. Hi, how Hello. are you? Hello, nice to be back. It's so lovely to have you back it's here. Nice to be in Manchester again. I know. I noticed when Carol was doing our weather, you had a very close eye on the northeast, looking very closely at your hometown. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I have a little weather app on my phone, you know, and I don't know whether you do, but I use mine all the time. Yeah. And. There Was we the are. sun shining the, on the you? The British have always been interested in <laughs> yes. the weather, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. And I think sometimes we always have one of the places that we love in our lives on that app, even That's if we right. don't necessarily live there. That's uh, right. Uh, uh, you're still rooted musically in the northeast, as your latest works show. Yeah, and I'm, I'll be wondering if it's raining in Whitley Bay, you know. Oh. Yeah, I will be. Um, yeah, uh, uh, well, I suppose life uh, it, it involves a, a few cities for me. Uh, it began in Glasgow when I was a little fellow listening to the radio on the floor. And, and the, because BBC had, it had a thing called Children's Favourites on Listen With Mother and stuff like that. And Are you that, sitting comfortably? Was that, yes. Yeah. Are you sitting comfortably? Well, I am, but Good. well remembered. <laughs> yeah. And are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and I, I remember my mum telling me I used to listen really intently. And I think it, well, I was listening to the words as much as the, the, the music, you know, because I can still sing all the words to, to... I mean, if you take a song like the Big Rock Candy Mountain, mm -hmm. It actually, was actually a hobo song, but I didn't know what a hobo was. I couldn't even walk. But I liked it. You know, I liked the music, and I think that, that, I think that my love for songs began there. And it has carried on, hasn't it, through the decades? And it's still there now with this latest work that you're sharing with us this morning that includes a reworking of perhaps one of your most famous pieces of music. Tell us about that. Oh, well, that was a lovely experience. That was just for the Teenage Cancer Trust and, and to share uh, with Teen Cancer in America as well, uh, which is an, uh, was, was a nice sharing. Um, and s someone suggested that we do an instrumental version, a new instrumental version of going home from the local hero music soundtrack, and which we often used to finish the set with. And, um, and then it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I don't know, I'm not sure uh, how it happened, but um, I think Mike Reed might have had something to do with it. There was some, definitely some mischievous people behind it all but well, they... look at these names and hear the music i mean <clears throat> you're in the middle but surrounded by all these glamorous assistants they were all fantastic everybody who played on it was ridiculously good and and uh, there was one after the other and i'd come in and 
Bruce Springsteen would have sent, sent a piece over from the States, you know, and it would be, there was everybody would be on it. It started where uh, uh, Pete Townsend came through the door because with teen cancer and teenage cancer, you know, the, obviously Roger Daltrey has spent his life involved with it and Pete's been involved with it too. So he came through with a guitar and an amp and started, when, when Pete Townsend plays chords on your tune, you, you know, it's, they stay played. And he's one of my favorite guitar players. And then was Eric Clapton came in, I think, the next day. And then there was David Gilmour. And and they'd all played beautifully on the song. It was one after another. And and um, I said to Guy, you know, because Guy is a trained recording engineer. So, I mean, he's... Guy he, you work with Yeah, Guy time. Fletcher, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Guy Fletcher from... Dire Straits. So we go back 40 odd years working together. Me and Gaius said, Gaius, because that's why I call him Gaius. I said, Gaius, this thing is going to be 20 miles long if we're not careful. <laughs> um, and can you can you edit it? And you know, can you keep it? Can you? And he, and bless him, you know, he's a great editor, and and he just kept working on it. And he might have had to. We might have had to double up some verses and. But he did some great editing on it, and we managed to fit, I think, everybody in. And there was some inspired playing from people, and even Joe Brown, who uh, you know, I remember seeing outside Newcastle. Uh, I, I remember seeing him in Newcastle City Hall when I was a little kid, and just getting interested in rock and roll. And Joe, it was plays a beautiful mandolin section on the tune, you know, and it's, he's still. He's still exactly the same. And it's unbelievable that Joe hasn't changed. I think music just keeps him young. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting, you mentioned Dire Straits. Obviously, it's a huge part of your story. And you guys still working together in different ways. Can I ask you the question that I know everybody asks you all the time? Is there any chance that you perform together as Dire Straits again? I don't think so. Uh just because, the, for a number of reasons, uh, one of them being is that I've built my own studio, which I really love being in, and I haven't had a bad day in there. And it's given me the chance to um, to really push. I mean, this last album, I've, I've done far too many songs. <laughs> and. Um, and I asked management about that, and they said, well, that's good. It's good to have all these extra you, I mean, if you wanted, like, one last... Even just one last show, one last gig, people would pay a fortune. They'd be queuing around the country to get in. They're not tempted, though. They could get you a job somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'll take 10%, Mark. Come on, let's do it. Seriously, though, are I you I don't just... think we'd be useless. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um... No, it's always been beautiful. I've always loved, I love Dire Straits and I love doing all that, but what I wanted to do was just to expand and work with different players and have a bigger lineup. You know, the, the last time I had the band in, and that's the high point for me, and you've got, yeah, I, I would probably have had about six or seven guys in, you know, it would be bigger than the little four piece that was stripped down than when we had it. And that was great for, and I loved it. I had, I had an absolute ball for as long as it lasted until it got so big that I didn't know the names of all the roadies. It was just getting big. Like family. Uh, it got so big, we were actually leapfrogging stages. <laughs> uh, and that's what you have to do when it gets to a certain scale. It's not the easiest thing. But the, the, the new album, um, is well, we talked about going home, and that's going home in a way as well, isn't it? Yeah, that's uh, that. That the going home thing is it's like a circular, a circular moment for me, which music's given me a lot of. Um, I should mention that Hank from the Shadows was also played on the Cancer record, the Teen, teen Cancer record, and because often he'd come and join us on stage back as Dire Straits early. Because the shadows recorded it as well, and that was he always. Can a, play. He's a great player. Yes. Hank is a great player. Don't make no mistake about it. 
And, um, but yeah, uh, well, the whole thing has been lovely. But yes, what happened really with me in recently, it's just like four buses coming along at once <laughs> and it wasn't planned that the, the teen cancer record happened, with the album happened, and then there was something else with me and Brian Johnson messing about on doing things on, on film and, and wh whatever else. So it's been busy, but it's kind of good to be busy. Of it course certainly it is. is. Yeah. Thank you for letting us get on your busy bus. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's great to have you here. Fantastic. Uh, Mark Knopfler. Thanks very much. His new album, One Deep River, will be released this Friday.